sitting down with energy standards, Tom Rushton and Siobhan Howie. Uh, you guys had a pretty sensational match on Thursday and Friday. You, you, you ended up running away with it, uh, but it certainly, you know, was pretty close for a lot of the match. <clears throat> Siobhan, let's start with you. You were one of the key players and one of the ones who scored a lot, a lot of points, especially in, in a relatively uh, small amount of events. What did you think of your performances over Thursday and Friday? Uh, I was pretty happy with them. Um, at the beginning of the week, I was a little sick, so I didn't really expect too much from my performance. Um, but I knew it was going to be a very tight match. Um, so I was just trying to do my best. And uh, I think it helps when like the rest of the team is also doing really well and you see someone, they go a best time, they go a season best, and it kind of just like pumps you up and make you even more excited to race. So yeah, I am happy with how I did. And I think as a team, we're getting better each match. And I think that's very important and will be even better for the finals. What ha- I mean, you mentioned you were a little sick heading into this week. Um, do you do anything differently to prep? I mean, what, what's the goal, I guess, time-wise or, or feel-wise of where you want to be for a match like this where, you know, it's important, but you also know you guys are probably going to finish top two. You guys are, you know, kind of already in that final, so you don't necessarily have to be at your best. Yeah, um, we... Heading into this match, we knew we were most likely going to make finals. Um, but our James James Gibson, he always says winning is a dirty habit. And of course, we want to win all of our matches because the more you win, the better you feel about yourself and the team. And so we still want to, you know, perform well and deliver um great performances. And um I was a little sick and I had to take a day off uh, from training just to feel a little better. Um, And the good thing is like, I work really closely with the coaches and they always ask like, how do you feel? Like what events do you think you can do? Is this racing schedule load too much or what do you think? And so I think you just like, I had to monitor how my body's feeling and making sure I, um, I can perform, but also not, overdo it so that I will be ready for finals um but yeah I just like just had to work closely with the coaches and let them know how I'm feeling so that we can adjust things so so you you adjust things you work with the coaches you get that extra day of rest and then um like you said it's it's easy to perform easier to perform when you see your teammates doing well Ilya breaks a world you know you guys are tied with London (laughs) Uh, heading into the women's hundred breaststroke. I think you probably, they, they outscored you a little bit. I I, I'm guessing in the women's hundred breast and then Ilya breaks a world record. Sarah swims the 50 fly jackpots a whole bunch. Um, so, I mean, did that just put you on kind of an unexpected level of, of energy or a high for you? Um, yeah, I think so. We, you know, everyone's always watching in the warm down pool and even in the call room, there's a TV there. So I watched every single race that you mentioned, like the men's and women's 50 uh, the breaststroke, the Sarah's fly. And it's it's just always so exciting to see when your teammate does well. I, I get more nervous and more excited when I watch people swim rather than when I race. Um, but yeah, I think it's like when you see someone do well, it kind of you know, it's like a positive to the team. And then the more like positive marks you have on the team, the, I don't know, it's like a, it's like a snowball effect and in a good way. And yeah, I think watching them swim definitely made me feel like, oh yeah, like we're getting the ball rolling and it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. And, and then to have Sarah as your teammate and to be, I I mean, maybe to be chasing her world record in that 200 freestyle. Have you guys had a dialogue about that at all over the course of the last couple of weeks, especially uh, after Friday when you were, you know, 0.22, I think away from it. We actually had this conversation. We have been having this conversation since last year. Uh, <laughs> Cause last, um, last year, I think finals was at night. And then in the morning, 
we went to the pool for a loosen and she was like you can do it and I wasn't really sure what she was talking about I was like what and she's like you can do it you can break my world record and I was like no I'm like you know a second a second and a half off of it and and but that was like the first time she said that to me and at that moment I was like whoa like I mean I was still pretty far off at that time but it's it's weird having the world record holder tell you that you can break her world record Uh, but it's also like a very special feeling and then I think we had like a similar like she said something similar when we were in um, Naples and then here she she was like you can go 149 like easy um like it's it's you know it's it's nice that like she believes in me so much and encourages me so much but I also just try not to think too much about it like I am aware of her world record and I am aware that I am pretty close to it but um I think I just want to focus on like my race strategy and my my race and just not think too much about chasing a world record or anything like that yeah I I think that makes total sense but it's uh, just what a what a cool thing the ISL has done to bring two competitors who are you know represent different continents together as teammates uh and are now you know one's chasing the other's world record and the other is encouraging it um yeah yeah, it's it's that's one one really cool thing the ISL done has has done um okay so tom let, let me ask you a few questions now uh so f- just first off you know talking about that role the energy got on i think as a as a fan it's easy to to just kind of assume that energy is always going to perform well but i don't think anyone saw a role like that coming um you know and but obviously as a coach i'm guessing you know you're always a little nervous or a little on edge when your athletes are swimming, just because you never know what's going to happen. You, you, you know, it's, you can predict it, but you never really know. Um, can you talk, talk me through how you were feeling as a coach when, when you and London were tied? Um, and then, you know, about 20 minutes later, when I think energy yeah. was up by 80 to a hundred. Yeah. I mean, we, um, as a coaching staff, we, we try to look at, before, before each session, each day of each match, we have, um, kind of what we predict the points will be after or during each race. And, and obviously the total points after each race. So we knew, um, we knew that we had a good shot on the second day of the match to, to give London a good, a good run for their money. Um, and coming in and it was actually Clement that won the men's hundred. I am that put us tied with London. Um, he had a great battle there with Duncan Scott and just got the touch. And obviously with the jackpot points that, that put us a little bit, you know, gave us a little bit extra points and that that's what tied us up. As you said, uh, women's, the women's breaststroke, we were, we, um, it was quite close, but we, they did get a little bit of a lead again. Uh, but then, you know, we go into this run in that session of, of Ilya in the 50, Ilya and um, Felipe in the 100 breaststroke, you know, one, two punch from them. Yeah. And then into Sara's 50 butterfly. And then we have, um, you know, one event and then Siobhan's 200 freestyle. And that's pretty devastating, you know, three, three uh, event combo there. Um, so we knew that the, those events are good. We knew that uh, the athletes in there, uh, all, all of those guys are super consistent. So, you know, like you'd asked about, do we feel, you know, nervous or anxious or anything? And, you know, with athletes that are professional, like these guys are, we feel pretty good. I'll admit that um, coming into the first day, especially knowing that Siobhan was sick, I was a little bit concerned with how she would do um, because I knew how sick she had been and she obviously downplays it, but for her to miss a day of training, you know, she's not feeling very good um, if that's the case. Um, So we were a little bit anxious around how she would do the first day and she was fine. But even um, as she alluded to, we were also worried about, you know, payout from those efforts on the second day um, and how that would how that would treat her. And, and again, she was obviously really still, still pretty good. Um, so we're confident in, in their ability to perform whenever they whenever they're asked to. Um, but we didn't we did not expect to be that far ahead after that. We, certainly the athletes just exceeded expectations for sure. 
Yeah, that was <clears throat> again <laughs> not not what I expected to see, but certainly was was pretty awesome to watch that huge streak, you know, happen of just very, very, very dominant on the energy standard side. Um, so heading into next week's final, um, what are what are what's the prep look like for the athletes just in terms of, are you just going to keep doing what you've been doing? You know, I mean, they're, they're performing on such a high level right now that is it, um, is it just keep doing that? Or does the, does the training change from now until Friday at all? Um, not hugely, <laughs> obviously if we're, you know, yeah, they're, they're swimming well, we don't want to change anything too dramatically. Um, we did start to, to come down a little bit last week, do a little bit less, volume a little bit less in the intensity um and we'll continue that theme in this upcoming week but we really only have a few days so we're not going to make any massive massive changes um and with all of them with all the athletes you know coming through this stop in Nineoven we've been really focused on season's best times and Siobhan very intelligently just kind of chips hundreds off as so she gets more season's best it's really smart you wouldn't want to do huge best time at the start you know um so we're just focused on trying to get a little bit better every every match, and that's what we'll work on in the in the training sessions this week. Is just trying to fine tune, work a little bit on the turns, work a little bit on the skills, and some of those, you know, things that that we know we can improve just a tiny bit. Uh, yeah, and then last topic, uh, I think both of you went to a training camp in Spain uh, between the ISL regular season in Naples and the, the postseason in Eindhoven. Um, can you just tell me a little bit about that and, and how it went? I saw Siobhan's uh, Instagram stories every periodically. And I mean, it just looked immaculate uh, scenery wise. It looked very pretty. Um, and it seemed like a great place to get some training done. Tom, from your perspective, how did that camp go? Yeah. Um, I think it was really good. Um, I, from my perspective as a coach, um, I wanted to go and do a little bit of altitude, not as a, not as a preparation for swimming faster in competitions necessarily, but more of a, of a springboard to uh, being able to actually train at a higher level. And um, I, from my perspective, I think that was a big success. We, you know, we did three weeks in Sierra Nevada um, at the altitude center there. And then we had another three weeks of training back down at sea level. The, the athletes that were in Sierra Nevada, Kind of dispersed a little bit. We had had people going back everywhere, but um, you know, f- uh, I was following all of them um, through that, and they all trained at a, at a from from what I've seen at a, a much higher level, a good, really good level, and um, and I think now we're seeing the results of that from from those guys in 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 Eindhoven. So yeah, yeah, and, and Siobhan, same to you. Just what do you feel like you took away from that camp, and how did you feel like it went for you overall? Yeah, I think. I think it went really well. Um, it's my first time doing altitude training. And so I didn't really know what to expect, but, um, everyone told me beforehand that walking up the stairs would be a major difficulty. And I absolutely agree. Um, but I am glad I did that because after Tokyo, I didn't really, I felt like I didn't really have a good solid chunk of training block. Um, and so, going to Sierra Nevada I had like three weeks of just like you know first week was more like aerobic base and then week two and week three really build it up um and so I could really work on like things that I need to focus in um and it's just I think it's just like there's not much there's not really much to do there and so it's just like your mind it's I don't know I just felt like it's a good place to just go there do your training you know, sleep, eat, and then go back to train and just, there's not much to do. So you're kind of in the routine of doing like the same thing every day. But I think that that helps me to just put in the hard work. And, um, and then when I went back to sea level to train, I, uh, felt pretty good. Um, and yeah, I think like the time between Naples and Eindhoven solid six or seven week of training, definitely paid off and i am i'm seeing results right now so it was it was a fun trip yeah nice yeah it certainly seems like the results are are there for for you and for all of energy um but that's great i'm thank you guys for your time i really appreciate it and excited to see what energy has to 
has to offer and put out there in the final next week. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.